Hello, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome and thank you for signing in to our webinar today. My name is Sean T, your moderator for this webinar. And at Alliance Bank, we help audience like you on how to understand the investment products that are offered by the bank. Today, we will be highlighting the topic core, navigating the COVID wave and featuring our distinguished speaker, Mr. Wong Kin Kian. Ken is the head of retail treasury sales. He has been with Alliance Bank for more than eight years as head of retail treasury sales. He's responsible in setting up the retail treasury desk to cater specifically to the needs of our high net worth individuals. In his tenure in Alliance Bank, he has introduced numerous new structured products covering various asset classes. Ken has over a decade of experience in dealing treasury products with background in sales and product structuring. For today's session, I'll be guiding the webinar by the way of questions and answer, which is Q&A process with Ken. That means Ken will be addressing a couple of questions within the allocated 30 minutes time frame. As we have a short period of 30 minutes, we are going to break this in, into four distinct chunks, namely the current COVID-19 situation. Next will be our country economy as a result of the pandemic and the lockdown followed by the risk moving forward to the economy. And finally, how should investors take opportunity of the current situation? By the end of our time today, we hope you feel more comfortable and confident about investing in the current environment. We are very passionate about why you should be taking the opportunity now to invest in this market and have many exciting scenarios and learnings to share here today. So Kian, I'll start with how do you see the current COVID-19 situation, its impact to the global economy, and when the economy can recover back to pre-pandemic level. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, thanks, Sean, uh, for the making uh, the introduction. Um, okay, the, I think uh, if you were to the, okay, the, let me move the slides. Uh, okay, the, I think two years on, I think uh, if you were to look at where the pandemic is or when it actually first started um, at the beginning of uh, 2020 or rather the end of uh, 2019, um, two years on, um, if you were to just look at this particular graph, um, we are nowhere near the end. Uh, in fact, I think uh, with uh, new variants uh, coming on, on board, um, we are actually seeing new waves uh, of uh, infection uh, happening uh, around the world. Um, as you can actually see, you know, the up to date, uh, we have actually breached 184 million uh, new cases um, and uh, or, or rather the cases and um, the numbers um, is still increasing uh, on a daily basis. And Malaysia, we are no different. Um, you know, cases are actually the, still the building up, piling on, uh, death um, is still, the, you know, the, um, increasing. Um, and globally, I think uh, in terms of death rate, we have actually surpassed uh, a 4 million uh, death uh, already. Um, so, you know, definitely the way we are looking at it, um, yes, uh, government has actually come in to, to the, do a lot of stimulus, uh, a lot of assistance, um, but definitely we are not uh, in the clear yet. Uh, we are still pretty much uh, in the midst um, of uh, the pandemic. And, uh, you know, fortunate or unfortunate is, uh, you know, the, the pace of recovery uh, is probably different uh, from country to country. Uh, Ken, um, I believe most of the audience would like to know also how about our own country's economy. Could you guide us through the situation of our country, Malaysia? Sure. I think if you were to look at Malaysia, um, we have been um, quick. Um, in terms of uh, implementing and actually, the, you know, announcing stimulus. Um, right now, I think in the latest uh, uh, stimulus that is um, actually being announced by the government is actually under the Pamule um, stimulus. And uh, if you were to look at all the other stimulus um, that has actually been uh, announced by the government, Pamule is actually the second largest, um, you know, the injection uh, by the government uh, after Prihatin. And pre hatim was actually the initial um, lockdown that we have actually seen. Um, and with the Pamule now the coming in at the 150 billion, um, what it does show to us um, is the government is really looking at this uh, seriously uh, and actually believe uh, with this uh, total lockdown that we are actually uh, experiencing right now, 
um, it is a serious, uh, um, you know, impact to the economy and henceforth, um, you know, justifying the, the amount of uh, fiscal uh, stimulus. And in total, uh, if you were to look at it, uh, we are already, uh, the government has already stimulated the 530 billion uh, ringgit, uh, of course, with a direct fiscal injection of only the 87 the billion um, so far. Um, but if you were to look at Malaysia, um, are we actually faring, uh, you know, the badly or, you know, the, or well? Um, in all honesty, the last year the, in 2020, despite all the stimulus that is um, actually the, being uh, announced, um, the lockdown has in fact uh, impacted uh, the Malaysian growth. Um, last year, we actually the, had a the negative growth or rather a recession of uh, negative 5.6%. Um, did we recover this year, you know, the, with uh, us uh, believing that, uh, you know, the, we are actually coming out of the lockdown the early of this year? Um, because if you can recall, uh, by end of last year, we are actually the, in a RMCO stage and, uh, you know, the, the whole Malaysia um, is looking forward to actually, the, you know, re-enter into a normal uh, or, or go back to their normal the livelihood. Uh, but the first quarter of 2021, uh, Malaysia is still suffering a negative growth of uh, 0.5%. Um, if you were to compare, you know, how did we actually perform versus our peers? Um, of course, Indonesia and Philippines, um, they are still the, in a negative zone in terms of growth. Um, Singapore, uh, for one, um, that has actually reopened the economy um, and rather contained the, the pandemic uh, well, um, have actually seen uh, growth uh, coming back uh, into the economy. And we have seen the same uh, for China. Uh, and obviously, China is one that has uh, managed to contain the pandemic uh, earlier on um, and has actually reopened the, the economy faster uh, than the rest of the world. Um, and if you were to look at the, the West, um, the EU, the UK, and also the US, um, initially, we have actually seen the US um, lagging behind in terms of the infection uh, and the vaccination, uh, but this time round, I think uh, with the vaccination drive uh, going into war drive, uh, we saw the US uh, coming back into growth, um, and we continue to see the you know optimism building up uh, in the the US. In Malaysia, um, if you were to look at what is actually the backbone uh, of um, our the GDP in terms of the recovery that is, uh, or rather the sector that is le leading the recovery is none other than the man manufacturing side. Um, as you can see, the manufacturing uh, has actually grown uh, pretty uh, decently. Uh, in fact, if you do look at the, the left hand side of it, uh, they are actually growing almost to 7% um, uh, year on year. Um, and this is actually, the, you know, looking very, very positive. But for the rest of the sector, um, I think it is still lagging behind, despite the fact that it has actually shown improvement. But again, I think uh, showing sort of graphs, uh, we need to put some caveat um, due to the fact that if you were to look at uh, when the rebound um, of these uh, sectors, uh, it actually started to come in in the second quarter, the third quarter of 2020 into the fourth quarter of 2020. And this is where, you know, the Malaysia has actually moved uh, into the RMCO, the, the CMCO, the period uh, where, you know, everyone is looking forward to reopen um, the whole of uh, the economy. Yeah. Next. Again, I think if you were to look at the, the uh, purchasing managers index, the PMI numbers, um, initially, if you were to look at how Malaysia is faring, um, just for the benefit of everyone, um, below the 50 line, below the, the uh, rating of 50, the number of 50, um, this actually represents a contraction um, of the economy and anything above 50 is actually representing an expansion of the, the economy. If you were to look at the timeline of when the recovery of Malaysia PMI numbers is, it is actually the, you know, coming in rather um, in the end of uh, 2020 um, and uh, moving into the, the first quarter of uh, 2021. But towards the, the end of May or rather the May, period, we started to see um, the figure coming off um, sharply um, and again um, towards the 50 level. Again, um, if you can recall, May is when um, we actually implemented 
the MCO. Um, and uh, towards the end of May, early June, uh, we actually go in. Uh, we actually went into a total uh, lockdown. Um, and in fact, uh, you know, just uh, some uh, two weeks ago, we actually went into a the EMCO. So, so if you were to look at May when the numbers is starting to fall, um, in the coming June, July, August, um, then this number could potentially weaken further. Uh, due to a more restrictive, uh, you know, the MCO that we're actually seeing. Um, so, you know, this um, slide or this table, we will probably want to take it with a pinch of salt. Um, but importantly, uh, it also indicates that uh, we are actually lagging behind, uh, you know, um, when we compare it to the global uh, PMI numbers. Um, so, you know, something that uh, we need to uh, bear that in mind. Um, over here, the, what we have just um, shown earlier is actually the, from the fiscal side. Um, the government has actually the implemented what you know 530 billion in terms of fiscal stimulus. Uh, Bank Negara um, has also the you know the not rest uh, on its laurels. Uh, it has also responded by the cutting the interest rate uh, to its lowest level uh, that we have just seen for the past 10 years. Um, currently, the, the OPR is uh, residing at 1.75. And this is actually rep representing the, the monetary policy response uh, from the government. Um, so, you know, here um, it does look like, you know, the country is moving in the right direction in terms of uh, policy response, where both the fiscal and monetary policy is used to the max, um, you know, in, in the responding uh, and stopping the halt um, of the, the pandemic uh, crisis that we are actually seeing. Um, over here, the, we would also like to highlight, you know, today will be a crucial day um, because if you were to look at the table the, at the bottom, um, on the 8th of uh, July um, is when MPC is going to meet and they will decide um, whether they will be cutting interest rate further uh, into the lowest level that we have actually seen in 10 years below the 1.75 uh, level. Um, if you were to look at the table as well, um, the consensus is telling us that, you know, that there will be no rate cut uh, this time around. Um, but again, I think, um, you know, what the market is really looking for um, is not really just about the rate cut. If rate cut comes in, fine, you know, it will take the whole market by surprise. Um, but importantly is the, the statement um, that is going to follow uh, from this uh, particular meeting. Um, any hint uh, of the dovishness uh, coming out from Bank Nagara um, is definitely going to hint that the next meeting in September, 9th of September, um, chances are uh, the, the Bank Negara will cut the interest rate. Um, so all in all, um, I think uh, what we can uh, rest, uh, you know, uh, basing on the, the situation that we are is happening right now, is that Bank Negara is not likely to be the considering any uh, interest rate hike at all. Um, at uh, the current moment, uh, we are in fact just looking at stable, unchanged, or maybe one more interest rate cut uh, for the year. Okay, Ken. So, what are the key risks ahead of us for Malaysia as we move along? Yeah, I think uh, this is where you know the, it gets a little bit uh, tricky over here. You know, the, so far. We have been highlighting, you know, so, uh, most of the, the good news, you know, the good data, uh, which is really consistent uh, with the, the global recovery the story. But once we dive in, you know, the, it might actually tell a little bit different uh, of a story. So first thing, you know, if you were to look at the COVID resilience uh, ranking, um, where, you know, this is from Bloomberg, uh, where we, they actually look at, you know, the, um, how quickly a country can actually the recover and reopen. Um, their economy. Um, here, over here, I have actually put in the, the top 10 and also the bottom um, 10 countries and how they actually evaluate um, a country from uh, how quickly they can actually reopen um, is people covered by vaccine, you know, the how soon can the people get vaccinated and how severe is the lockdown um, and the flight capacity, are they actually opening up the borders and allowing flights to the restart? Um, and definitely the last one would be the, you know, the vaccinated the travel routes. So, you know, um, although flights are actually allowed, um, where can they actually the travel? And if you were to look at Malaysia, we are ranked 51 out of 53 countries um, under this survey. 
And uh, if you were to look at, you know, people being covered by vaccination, you know, we are only about what, 10% um, and, and probably the slightly lesser than that, depending on how quickly we can uh, get uh, people to vaccinated. Um, and if you were to lock, uh, look at the lockdown, the severity, we are currently at the um, you know, highest level uh, where you know, the most uh, part um, of the country, particularly the Klang Valley, um, is actually under the EMCO. Um, and only the, some states are actually allowed um, to move into the phase two, the, while the rest um, still remain stuck uh, in the phase one the, you know, of the, the national recovery the plan. And uh, of course, you know, talking about flight capacity and also the vaccinated tra travel routes, um, we are practically still, you know, stopping our borders where, you know, we can't even travel, uh, you know, interstate, let alone the in the country. Yeah. So that is Malaysia. You know, we are not looking um, like we are going to reopen our country anytime soon. Right. Um, but if you were to look at, you know, the, the bright story, the good story, you know, you look at the top 10 countries, you know, the US and New Zealand, um, Australia, mainland China, you know, in fact, to a certain extent, the UK, um, and they are actually reopening the economy. And if you were to look at the data that is coming out, um, optimism is seriously the, um, um, positively creeping into the system. Uh, people are getting uh, more confident. Um, employment numbers are definitely recovery um, and uh, consumer spending is also the, on an increasing uh, run. Um, and that actually tells you, you know, once you open up the economy um, and people can really look forward uh, to actually the return to their normal life. Um, and that is seriously what we would like to see um, you know, and ranked, you know, how soon can we actually reopen? And this is where, you know, the story get a little bit, uh, you know, the bad. Um, you know, if you were to look at Malaysia, uh, we actually started on the right footing. We started on the right track. Um, if you were to look at the, the third uh, line from the bottom, um, and that is actually Malaysia being ranked number 51 out of 53. And if you were to follow that particular line um, back to the Q4 of uh, 2020 into the Q1 of 2021, Malaysia is among the leading pack. We are actually recovering, um, you know, on track to recover and on track to reopen. Um, our economy, you know, the, in fact, if you were to look at earlier uh, of this year and in fact uh, Q4 of last year, we were in fact ahead and, you know, the, has a better footing than even the US, the UK. Um, but look at where we are right now. I think this actually the, started to plunge uh, badly um, towards the, the May period uh, and also the June period uh, when the, the, the country actually re-entered. Uh, into another the lockdown and into another the full MCO uh, and subsequently you know to the highest uh, level um, at the EMCO that, that we are actually the, uh, seeing right now. So if you were to look at and we and we are not just talking about a Bloomberg single survey you know we actually took also the economist uh, normalcy index uh, that was actually published uh, on the 24th of June um, again, you know, the story is not, um, you know, the uh, complementary um, of where we are in terms of uh, recovery stage. Um, if you were to look at the, the core services, you know, the, um, how they actually gauge uh, the normalcy index, uh, they actually look at, you know, the sports attendance, you know, the cinema, the flights, the road traffic, the public transport, the office use, the retail and time not at home. Um, in fact, you know, more grimmingly, you know, that we are actually ranked the last uh, of the, the countries that is actually being surveyed um, here. But of course, you know, I would also like to, to point out um, that, you know, of all the countries that is being surveyed over here, um, there is actually a pre-pandemic level of 100. Um, unfortunately, no country is actually back above the 100 level, which means most of the countries, even all the countries, um, is still rather facing the pandemic level. Um, but again, you know, the, the uh, rate of, uh, you know, returning to normal um, varies from country to country. But unfortunately, Malaysia is ranking the last. And this is where we want to get, and rather when we want to really start to get critical. Uh, because number one, 
without real GDP, you know, we will probably see employment continue to lag behind. But in fact, for emerging market Asia, the big five countries, um, despite uh, us um, actually seeing some real GDP growth, or rather the GDP is stopping its rot uh, from actually the going anything uh, worse, um, employment numbers are not reflecting positively or reacting positively um, to the, the GDP the growth. Um, and when employment is not improving uh, together with uh, the GDP, um, then the next uh, point that we will get critical is actually wages. Um, here, um, as employment is getting uh, restricted, employment is getting challenging, uh, wages are also under pressure. Um, over here, what you can actually see, in fact, the wages are actually in the negative region and this is definitely no good um you know the in in a summary when you don't get wages when you don't get employment you don't get a job you don't get wages and when you don't get, get wages you don't have um you know cash to spend to splur to to purchase goods that is being manufactured right and that again is going to have a spiral uh, impact or rather a chain effect on the whole economies and so what you know the most economies will rely on just purely on exports again relying on consumption yeah and when we actually see income uh, being depressed um core cpi or rather the cpi the inflation will remain subdued and we are seeing exactly that happening um towards uh, for the asia the five countries um where you know the employment income has decreased or on decline um and has not actually uh, reached the bottom yet uh, we are actually also seeing the core CPI um, in the negative region as well. But this is again on the emerging market, uh, big five uh, countries. In Malaysia, how are we different? Uh, we are actually not any different. Well, we are not seeing a negative core CPI, but core CPI is definitely subdued. It is definitely looking depressed. Um, it is going to range between 0 0.5 to about uh, you know the 1.5, but I doubt it is really going to the move uh, back strongly um, above the the 1% anytime soon, um, due to the fact that you know in Malaysia employment numbers is definitely still a suspect, um, very much due to the fact that you know now we are under uh, EMCO category uh, in the Klang Valley the uh, region, uh, while others uh, country is slow uh, in also moving into the phase two. And I think um, again with the cost um, CPI the being subdued, um, I think uh, this is also the rather uh, reflected um, on the, the consumer consumption. Now, over here, this particular two slides is um, interesting to me um, because it is really reflecting um, even personally, you know, the how I would have felt um, on my sentiment um, towards the economy. Um, as you can see, you know, people mobility the, towards the beginning of the year has been the, being relaxed, has been the rather positive. It is actually improving um, and uh, it also coincide uh, with the, the rebound uh, in the consumer sentiment um, together with also the wholesale, the retail and also the private consumption. If you were to look at, uh, you know, the, 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 the lowest point, um, of the, the consumer sentiment is actually came um, towards the third quarter of uh, 2020 um, and uh, it started to actually rebound uh, from there uh, from the, the fourth quarter of uh, 2020. Um, and uh, similarly, I think uh, private consumption has also the, you know, recovered the, uh, roughly the, the same period of time. Um, over here, if you were to look at the people mobility trend, um, early of the year, you know, the mobility has been the improving, but again, um, the consumer sentiment uh, information that we gather, you know, officially from the government um, is only up to the first quarter of 2021. Uh, we have not seen the, the figures for the, the second quarter and also the third quarter, obviously. And um, what we are actually the, um, saying right now is that uh, with the people mobility the being uh, decreasing, uh, down uh, with the implementation of MCO3 um, and also the total lockdown, uh, we do expect 
the consumer sentiment uh, and also the, the private consumption to actually decrease uh, moving into Q2 and also the Q3 the period. Henceforth, you know, the, for us, uh, rather, um, if you were to look at, uh, you know, are we going to hike interest rate anytime soon? Um, again, we want to fall back on the, the, you know, table that we have actually seen earlier. The top 10 countries that is actually looking to the reopen their economy. Um, and the U.S. is one of them, you know, the, the, the leading, leading the pack. Um, and uh, for the U.S., uh, back in the September 2020, if you were to look at the expectation to hike the interest rate, um, in fact, uh, most market participants will tell you they will not hike uh, any time before 2023. Most of them will say that it will be after 2023. But in the June 2021 survey, uh, which was just last month, um, in fact, if you were to look at the, the market participant, uh, you know, feedback, now they're actually saying that, you know, um, the rate, the interest rate will likely uh, be raised as early as, or rather the, the earliest uh, is by 2023. So that is telling us that, you know, for a country that has really, the, you know, the reopen and is gearing up to the more reopening, um, you know, in terms of travel, um, they are only looking to hike interest rate in 2023. For Malaysia, we are at the bottom of the rank. You know, we are not even talking about reopening our economy. You know, if we can actually contain the pandemic, I think uh, that would uh, be the, the step in the right direction. Um, but we are nowhere there yet. So um, in essence, if you were to look at uh, where the interest rate hike or rather the interest rate uh, environment for Malaysia, I think it will remain low, if not lower uh, than what we are actually seeing um, today. So the key takeaway that uh, you know, I would like to share the, today, the number one, is the recently announced the NRP the actually indicate that Malaysia can only possibly uh, move into a full reopening uh, in the November and December 2021. Bearing in mind, um, if we were to also follow the NRP plan, by right, we should already be moving uh, into phase two nationwide um, in July. Uh, we are already in July and we are nowhere near um, to actually moving to phase two, particularly for the Klang Valley. Um, in fact, uh, the, one of the key criteria is to have the, the number of infection coming below the 4,000 uh, cases. We are nowhere near. In fact, we are not getting any lower. In fact, we are actually getting higher infection um, you know, the rate for number of cases. Um, the recent EMCO implementation in Selangor and also Kuala Lumpur, um, again, uh, will also continue to hamper the manufacturing sector in Malaysia. And we have already seen earlier uh, of the slide that manufacturing sector is actually the key sector that is actually driving Malaysia economy. Again, with the EMCO, EMCO implementation, I think with the manufacturing sector being the lockdown, um, it will definitely has a detrimental the effect, uh, effect uh, on the, the Malaysian GDP. Thirdly, it's actually the overall unemployment uh, number, which we have actually uh, mentioned earlier. Unemployment rate uh, released by the government remains low. You know, it is looking great. You know, uh, we have got an employment numbers of 4.5% in 2020. Um, and it's only increased marginally in January 2021. But seriously, in Malaysia, how are you being classified as employed? Um, the criteria is very, very simple. All you need to do is to work one hour in one week for salary. That's it. So if you were to drive Grab for one hour in one week, you are considered employed, right? And therefore, you know, the number for unemployment numbers will continue to remain low because I'm pretty sure, you know, the most of the citizen can easily work for one hour in one week, you know, for salary. So we want to move to the next category, which is actually the underemployment, which is critical because it, this goes to show that, you know, a, a graduate could be taking a the semi-skilled or unskilled uh, role or a job, um, you know, and therefore, you know, deriving a lower salary um, than what should have been, the, you know, the case if, um, you know, the economy is looking uh, vibrant and, you know, uh, employment is easily the found um, and job mobility is easy. But again, we are not seeing uh, that actually happening because unemployment 
underemployment is still remaining very high. In fact, a big portion of it at 37.4%. So here it means that the people who is under the, the underemployment category will likely receive a, a salary or income that is lower um, than what they should actually be the getting. So if you were to combine both the unemployment numbers and also the underemployment numbers, um, they actually uh, would account for more than 40% um, of the population. And this is a lot, right? And therefore, I would like to think that this would definitely be also, again, detrimental to the overall the economy, the health of uh, Malaysia. With the wage growth being subdued, again, due to the uh, huge amount of unemployment, also underemployment, core CPI will not likely rise significantly um, despite the low interest rate environment, which again gives the opportunity to the government to, to consider, in fact, to continue to cut interest rate further to actually boost the, the economy. So with the outlook now seems to point to a delay in reopening that will subdue the interest rate environment. I believe the audience may want to know how could they take the advantage in investing in this kind of environment? Thanks, uh, the, Sean. No, I think I think this is where you know we we are happy and and, and we are proud to be the sharing uh, this particular product uh, with uh, our clients and and we feel uh, strongly about this um, particularly during this period uh, you know of uh, the time um, and that is actually referring to our Clibo range accrual structured investment where we actually think that you know currently it is a pretty uh, a good defensive strategy. Um, under this weak or lower interest rate uh, environment. If you were to look at the, the overnight policy rate uh, for Malaysia, um, we have been uh, maintaining our pretty accommodative uh, interest rate environment uh, for the past 10 years. Um, but of course, during for, due to the pandemic that actually has happened uh, in the end of 2019 to 2020, um, we saw Bank Negara actually cutting aggressively um, all the way to 1.75%. Uh, um, likewise, I think we have actually seen deposit rate uh, also the fallen, um, decline. Um, with FD rate right now, the, if you were to go the, you know, to, to put into FD the over the counter, uh, it's probably going to give you the below the 2%. Um, again, you know, the, that is not just uh, the end of the story. Uh, if you were to look at EPF, if you were to look at Tabo Haji, if you look at the Pomodalan the National uh, Buhat, um, all these, uh, you know, the government link uh, agencies um, are also declaring lower return um, to the depositors. Um, so again, you know, where we do see the, you know, looking at or rather the putting into consideration or um, the impact of this pandemic uh, to our country, um, I continue to believe um, that the interest rate will continue to remain low, if not going lower. And therefore, you know, the, I think, uh, you know, the, um, to actually consider other structural product um, that would be able to enhance the yield uh, would be definitely the, the right way to be the going. And this is where we have the open top um, uncertain uh, scenario where equity, you know, is, is not look, is looking a bit volatile right now. Uh, it's not having a very clear direction. Um, and different countries has got a different uh, reopening uh, schedule. Um, so, you know, principal protection, uh, I think, should rank uh, the top uh, at the moment. Uh, we are actually uh, looking at a coupon payment of 4%. Again, you know, comparing to a FD rate uh, that is actually looking at a sub 2%. Um, again, we are almost doubling um, that uh, of the FD rate right now. Um, and definitely, uh, we have actually, uh, you know, embed a core feature um, into the, the structure. Um, and I would like to think that this is um, a, a very important feature for us to actually be the sharing with our clients um, due to the fact that today is actually where um, uh, Ben and Gara will actually be the meeting. And uh, should we actually start, uh, or, or rather see a rate cut uh, coming up from Ben and Gara, um, do not be surprised. It's not a guarantee, but do not be surprised um, for the structure to be the callback uh, earlier uh, than the, you know, the uh, schedule, the six years uh, that we have actually planned uh, for this. And importantly, I think for this particular the structure, we are actually, the, you know, giving out a regular coupon payment uh, that is actually being paid uh, on a quarterly the basis. Yeah, so this sort of structure to me um, works best uh, for 
clients who believe that number one, interest rate is going to remain low currently, will remain stable at the current level uh, for a prolonged period, period of time. And in fact, also believe that OPR could in fact go even lower from the current uh, level. So this is where, you know, the, how the structure actually works. Um, as long as the, the three months climb will remain below the three months climb, then the client will actually be getting and earning the 4% uh, per annum per year. And if you can actually see here, uh, we are actually, the, you know, the raising uh, the upper range uh, barrier the, to ensure that, you know, client uh, interest uh, is continued to be the protected. And this is what uh, we mentioned by the upper range is being actually increased on a yearly basis. So when we enter into the first year, uh, we actually have an upper range of 2.3%. And versus the current climb ball, uh, as of today, before the MPC meeting, right, uh, is at 1.94%. So you are actually seeing a gap of 0.36%. Now, again, we don't think this year we are going to see any rate hike. So you already have a buffer of 0.36%. And assume, you know, we are only looking at, uh, you know, the uh, uh, possible interest rate hike uh, by the, you know, end of 2023 um, after the US have actually hiked the interest rate and, you know, Malaysia have also recovered nicely uh, into the early 2024. Um, then you're actually looking at the possible the fourth year uh, where we will we would actually be seeing uh, some uh, interest rate hike, um, you know, in Malaysia. Uh, you would realize at a point in time, the upper range would have been increased um, steadily over the years by 0.3%. Um, and as long as in this particular three years, um, you know, Bank of doesn't actually hike the interest rate, then you will start to realize um, the, the range continue to get more comfortable, safer, you know, for you, you know, to be continually to earn the 4%. And again, um, would also mean that, you know, you are actually getting more than the normal deposits that we actually, uh, you know, the, uh, paying out right now. So in a nutshell, you know, this is the summary. Um, this is actually a six years uh, product, but it is principal protected. Um, although this is actually a six years product, it is actually subject to the core option uh, right after the first coupon payment. So after the first coupon payment, uh, the bank reserved the right to actually terminate the structure. Um, and uh, looking at the you know situation, if and should there be a rate cut today, um, chances are you know we could actually be cutting or rather calling back uh, this particular structure the quick quicker than the six years uh, period that we actually envisioned here. Uh, coupon is actually being paid uh, on a quarterly basis with subject to the uh, barrier uh, observation, uh, which is actually being increased uh, by 0.3% uh, on a yearly basis all the way uh, to 3.8% uh, uh, on the year six. Yeah, so um, that's all that I have to share the, today. The, you know, the, Sean, back to you. Yeah, thanks, Ken. Uh, although Ken, uh, although we have overrun a little bit, but I'm sure that Ken has covered and also provided very interesting information today. And I believe the audience have positive takeaways of how they can act if they decided to invest in the current environment. So before we wrap it up, uh, is there any uh, the last thing that you want to uh, say and highlight, Ken? Yep, um, you know, that's, that's uh, all from me. I think uh, seriously, I think uh, in times like this, uh, we need to stay safe. Uh, stay uh, mentally sound. Um, I think uh, uh, if you are the feeling uh, bored, uh, please do call our RMs. Uh, you know, definitely they will have a story to share, a product to share, you know, and uh, stories uh, to be, the, you know, the talking about, you know, how we can actually enjoy uh, the current lockdown and uh, how we can actually benefit uh, from the current environment. Yeah, um, but otherwise that's all from me. Um, thank you, Sean. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Ken. That's very right uh, on what Ken has mentioned. Talk to your relationship managers now to see how you can benefit and enjoy potentially higher returns when you invest with Alliance Bank in this low deposit interest rate environment. At the same time, to enjoy the perks and cash rewards of up to 2,800 ringgit that brought to you exclusively by the brand new refreshed Alliance Privilege. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.